It's been over a year now that the Namami Gange scheme was launched. The BJP-led NDA government announced this flagship program to clean the river Ganga on the very same day the Prime Minister and his cabinet were sworn in. On paper, it looked like a flawless program which if executed properly could buoy the river's water quality. But sadly, after more than a year, nothing has moved on the ground. Since 1985, when the first attempts were made to clean the Ganga, success has eluded the country's policy makers. A lot of money has been pumped into cleaning the river, but most of it has run down the proverbial drain. Beginning in 1986 and up till 2014, about 987 crore rupees were spent in two different phases of the Ganga Action Plan 1 and 2. Due to the failure of the Ganga Action Plan, National Ganga River Basin Authority or NGRBA for tackling pollution at a basin specific level was launched in 2009. Till 2014, about 910 crore rupees were spent under NGRBA, bringing the total expenditure close to 1900 crore rupees. If so much money was pumped in, then why did these programs fail? They failed because the policy makers could not see beyond technological fixes. They thought that setting up pollution abatement devices like sewage treatment plants was the only nostrum to this malaise. So between 1985 until namami gange was launched the government went about setting these plants in urban centers with population of 100000 and above till june 2014 a total treatment capacity of 1208 million liters per day had been created but they failed to provide any succor to the river's water quality sewage treatment plants would work only if these cities were connected through a well established sewerage network but most indian cities do not have such a system in place and those on the banks of the ganga are not very different so these plants could intercept very little of the sewage generated by the cities before it reached the river let's take a look at kanpur and varanasi two big cities on the banks of the ganga kanpur generates about 435 million liters per day of sewage but the current pollution abatement infrastructure running optimally can only treat about 162 million liters per day and this is because just 39% of the city is connected to an organized sewer system the remaining households in the city of close to 3 million people expel their sewage into big and small open drains which discharge into the ganga kanpur has another problem of tanneries which discharge about 50 million liters per day of highly toxic chemical waste of this Only about 9 million liters are treated in common effluent treatment plants. Similarly, Varanasi, the holy city with a population of 3.6 million, has only 30% of its homes connected to sewer lines. Close to 300 million liters of sewage is generated in Varanasi, but the city's capacity to treat sewage is only 102 million liters per day. The rest of it is carried directly into the Ganga through open drains. The same story repeats itself through most of the towns and cities along the banks of the river. People in charge of cleaning the river somehow missed this point completely. Forget drinking, the Ganga does not even meet the Indian standards safe for bathing, except at some of the upper stretches in its course in Uttarakhand. A recent estimate by the Central Pollution Control Board shows the difference between the official estimate of sewage and the measured discharge of wastewater into the Ganga. is as much as 3364 million liters per day this is 123% higher than what the policy makers planned for at least on paper the namami gange scheme is aware of the problems faced by the earlier ganga cleaning initiatives the scheme can also ameliorate the water quality if implemented properly it takes an integrated approach by involving seven ministries connected to the river along with local people living on the banks municipal corporations and the panchayats unlike the earlier programs decentralized systems are also being discussed to take care of waste in urban areas which are not connected to the sewer systems monitoring will be conducted at the district state and national levels territorial army units and eco task forces will be set up and a new law to prohibit pollution will be promulgated 
and to top it all, a budget of 20,000 crore rupees for five years has been sanctioned. This is almost 10 times what had been allocated in previous cleaning programs. But after more than a year, how far has the government implemented this ambitious scheme? Well, very little has moved on the ground. The Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation has only cleared setting up of waste treatment plants that were proposed in the earlier Ganga Action Plans. One of the quicker things that could have been accomplished was the new legislation on keeping the Ganga pollution free. But this too is nowhere near completion. What has happened during this time frame are a lot of meetings but very little action. Cleaning the Ganga, we all know, can be a Herculean task. But it is time that all the lip service about cleaning must be put into action. There are a few key points that have to be considered in order to ensure that Namami Gange does not meet the same fate as earlier schemes. We have to accept that the urban areas will not catch up with the infrastructure to build conventional sewage networks at the scale and pace needed for pollution control. Therefore, we need to reinvent methods to prevent the waste from reaching the river and preferably treat it within a localized area. The availability of water for dilution will be critical since the cost of pollution control treatment in India is unaffordable and unmanageable. There is a need to publicly fund Ganga cleaning programs but simultaneously ensure that state and municipal governments have to contribute either through funds or through release of water for ecological flow. Industrial pollution of the river has to stop and these industries must be able to meet discharge standards that have been set legally in the country. There is no river in the world with a larger heart than the Ganga. In its 2,500 km journey from the ice-capped Himalayas to its merger with the Bay of Bengal, the river nourishes and sustains a population of nearly 400 million people in two countries. It's time now that we show how much we revere the Ganga.